Quick, the boss needs a cool looking landscape map, but you've only got five or 10 minutes. Okay, a landscape map of the Grand Canyon. I think we need 50% more dimension than your average map. 3D. When it comes to landscape mapping, imagery is fantastic, and so is Hillshade. But when you blend those two together, that's when the real magic happens. So I'll add from Living Atlas the world Hillshade tile layer. The whole world, all scales, just beautiful. And I'll smush it into our underlying imagery using the luminosity blend mode. Anybody can blend Hillshade in imagery, but depth and mist, next level. So to this blendy map, I'm going to add the terrain layer from Living Atlas. It's a global digital elevation model, low areas as black, higher areas as white. I want to maximize my contrast, so I'm going to give it a stretch type of standard deviation, and I'll smooth it out by giving it six stops. And now for some color alchemy. I'm going to change this lower elevation black color to a deep reddish color, and higher elevation colors will be a lighter greenish color. When we apply a blend mode of soft light to this layer, it'll add a sense of depth to our terrain. And then to make a misty version of this, I'll duplicate this layer by holding control and dragging. I'm going to turn off its blend mode, just normal, and I'll change its color scheme to be white to fully transparent white. And I can drag the start and stop handles of this gradient so that the resulting mist looks about right in my landscape. And by golly, that's just a little too misty, so I'll tweak this to render at only lower elevations until it looks right. Sure, it looks cool, but it's also an important tool for visualizing depth in a place and giving it a sense of atmospheric mass. Digital or print? Print. Poster or landscape orientation? Eh, time for a layout, I'll choose the Insert tab and choose New Layout, and I'll choose the size of Architectural D, a weird arbitrary American print size. Into this layout, I will insert my map, and I'm going to fill the whole page because margins are the worst. And I'll just take a second and watch this luscious map draw in. When it comes to compositions, think of the rule of thirds and dynamic diagonals. If you break your layout into three slices, interesting stuff should be happening at the boundaries or at least in each chunk. It's an old photography trick, but cartography is not above stealing the best ideas from each domain. Additionally, if you can arrange your view such that an important feature arcs diagonally across your view, it's just gonna look more dynamic and sizzling hot. And now I'm going to add a background for my title. And not just any background, not a solid, boring background. I'm going to make it a faded white background. It's a continuous linear gradient that goes from opaque white to transparent white. Now when you choose transparent white, don't just say no color, because that's transparent black and you'll get a bunch of nasty gray gradient in between. And this will serve two purposes. The first being it declutters the area behind where I'm going to put the title. And a sneaky reason is it gives it a little bit of atmospheric perspective. And on top of this is where I'll put the map's title, Grand Canyon. One of my favorite map fonts is Century Gothic. It's a nice, clean, basic, sans serif font with a crisp, modern appearance. And I'll break out the symbology panel for this text, and I'm going to center it. When it comes to tier one labels on your map, like oceans or continents or map titles, you almost can't have too much letter spacing. So I'll add a letter spacing percent of 100. Hmm, more letter spacing? All the letter spacing. Let's crank it up to a thousand. Actually, okay, let's make it 800. And I'll manually center it. And I'm careful to leave about the same amount of room from the top of the map as the sides of the map. Currently, the title is too prominent and I don't want it to steal any thunder from the map itself. So I'll nestle it into its surroundings by giving it a gradient fill. I'll leave the white value at the bottom of the text as is in Choose a nice earthy green for the top of the text. And we can also format that little data citation text that automatically appears at the bottom of the map. If I choose insert and scroll nearly all the way down, there's an option called service layer credits. And if I click anywhere, that'll drop that text in an editable fashion onto the layout. Editable in that I can change its format, like its font and size and color. And when the boss gets back with you and says, is there any way we can make it pop? The answer is, yeah. We can just open up the property of our color gradient and play with those slides snugging them into the meaty bit of the elevation range, pushing the darker lower elevation up and the lighter higher elevation color down. In the very deepest portions of our elevation map, we can just make black. Is there any way we could make it pop more? Yeah, I mean, we can just duplicate our tint layer and really crank it up. And because the only way to know where the edge is is by going over it. Here's how to dial it back just a little bit. Just pick one of those tint layers and then cut its opacity in half. So I'll choose 50% transparent. Glorious. 
Okay, our work is done. Time to export this thing. I'll choose the Share tab and Export Layout. When you export a map like this, don't export it as a PDF. PDFs are for vectors, points, lines, polygons. This is all pixels. We're talking raster here. Export as a PNG. Ah, good old PNG. The format pixels want to be exported as. What about output resolution? DPI, dots per inch. I guarantee you, whoever's printing this will ask you for 300 or more DPI. Save some time and give them what they want. Now we're pushing a lot of pixels and this could take a few minutes, but we saved so much time making it that we've got time to spare. But look what we've made, and so fast. Your boss thinks you're still working on it. Meanwhile, you're going for a walk, going out to lunch, calling your mom, 